hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber a warm welcome back in this video i'm going to be talking about hotel number 16 as part of my staycation series hotel number 16 is part of the firmdale group of hotels there are 10 hotels in total in the group two are located in new york and the remaining eight are dotted around west and central london and number 16 hotel is located specifically in south kensington I'm Anesu Sagonda and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go, or you're into luxury but you want to focus more on the brands that operate under the radar and packing a mighty quality punch, or you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, then my content is very much geared towards you. Hotel number 16 has been on my radar for many years. Whenever I travel and people find out I'm based in London, they invariably will ask me for hotel recommendations. And that's because London has an abundance of hotels across all price points. If you have a budget of about 250, 300 pounds a night, and you would like somewhere that's a little away from the hustle and bustle of central London, tourists, traffic, but it's within an easy commuting distance. It's a 20 minute walk away. Oh, you would like somewhere that is um, not in central London, but it's still central enough with excellent transport links. There's a tube station a minute away from the hotel, uh, a good network of buses, abundance of taxis. You want somewhere that's nice in a very nice part of town. You want somewhere that's possibly home away from home, somewhere with really good facilities. So think of restaurants, think of shops, think of activities to do. Then South Kensington is a superb location. The hotel itself is very discreetly located on Sumner Place. It's made up of four interconnecting 19th century townhouses. You come out of the hotel and you turn right. End of the road, you have Old Brompton Road. Right on the corner of Old Brompton Road and uh, Sumner Place is Hummingbird Bakery. And Hummingbird Bakery is behind the whole cupcake trend, not only in London, but the United Kingdom. Their red velvet cupcakes are the best. Turn left, you have about 50 meters up on your right, uh, on the right hand side, uh, Machalayo. And Machalayo is part of a chain. It's a steak restaurant. They have a number of locations dotted around London. And they are the very best. When it comes to steak chains, they're ahead of their competitors Gaucho Grill, Hawksmoor, for example. The rest of the street has a, a fairly diverse selection of. Um, easy dining, informal restaurants offering a diverse array of different cuisines. And then behind that street, you have about a minute away Natural History Museum, you have the Victoria and Albert, you have the Science Museum. And then five minutes walk away from there, you have Kensington Palace, Kensington Gardens, and then to the right, Hyde Park. On the other side of the park, you have Notting Hill, and that leads on to Portobello Market. And Portobello Market is a 30-minute walk door-to-door -door from Hotel Number 16. Turn left out of Hotel Number 16, end of the road, you have Fulham Road. Turn right and you have, again, a fairly diverse selection of informal restaurants. Turn left, left uh, two, three minutes um, on your right, you have Bebendum, a fine dining establishment. And then a minute from Babendum, you have Daphne's, an Italian restaurant. And Daphne's is, is one of the best residential restaurants, not only in West London, but just London as a whole. The staff are engaging, they're fun, and the food is absolutely delicious. Just at, behind Daphne's, you have the start of Walton Street, and you have just on the corner, Joseph Multibrand Boutique that I've spoken about. You have Chanel and a number of other boutiques. Think of Orla Bar, Derek Rose, James Purse, uh, Isabel Moran, for example, a number of healthy dining uh, establishments. And then the end of Walton Street is Harrods. A minute's walk away from Harrods, you have Harvey Nichols, and then the delights of Sloan Street. Coming back to the hotel, you enter the hotel, as I said, very discreetly located. It, 
it took me walking past the hotel two, three times um, a week for years to realize it was, a, it was actually a hotel. And it was only when I heard about the Orangery restaurant, their restaurant um, in the hotel, that I ventured in and discovered, oh my goodness, this place is an absolute gold mine. You go up the stairs and then to your right is the reception area. I had called ahead of my stay and booked my room. I had seen a promotion online and I was able to upgrade from a standard to a deluxe room for the same price as the standard room. And around the time of my staycation, London was potentially about to go into lockdown. Um, the government was still very much umming and ahhing. So it was a ghost town. There are very few tourists about. Uh, hotel occupancies across the board were incredibly low and hotels were keen to get footfall in at any cost. I arrived, pleasantries were exchanged, I filled in all the necessary paperwork, I paid for my room and then the manager escorted me to my room. En route to the room he um, showed me the various facilities that were available to me during the course of my stay. As we're coming out of the reception area, big glass cabinet in front of us, and in there they had a whole selection of their own branded products for guests to buy. In there they have their Rick Rack uh, line of toiletries. It's the range of toiletries they use in all their hotels. There are possibly two or three fragrances to their range of toiletries. And there's one I particularly like. First discovered it at Ham Yard and ever since I have been buying it as presents and I've yet to come across anybody who doesn't like this particular fragrance. It's the Gardenia and Sandalwood. It's a floral fragrance. And what I really like about it is firstly, the, the smell, the scent itself is delightful. It lingers for the longest time ever, but it's not a very rich, nourishing, um, cream texture it's something that I use in the summer it's light it lingers it's a fantastic a delightful fragrance I really like it and I highly recommend it went through to the, uh, the first room very much in keeping with um, the old British money that I mentioned before instead of referring to a living room it's it's a drawing room very richly decorated in your autumnal wintery colors so think of your oranges your browns your reds there were beiges, there were whites in there. And then the next room is the library and the honesty bar. Very different, it's day and night, it's light, it's airy, it's decorated in very cheerful colors. Honesty bar, well stocked with a whole selection of wines, spirits, drinks from um, artisanal British uh, producers. Both rooms you can use at any time of day or night. You can actually order uh, room service from your room and have it delivered to you either in the, uh, the library or the drawing room. Both are fairly small and open and I wouldn't recommend the hotel or the facilities to somebody who is after a business hotel as such. Maybe a business traveler who wants somewhere comfortable, somewhere stylish, somewhere well appointed to stay but not someone after somewhere to have meetings where you want a bit of privacy or you want somewhere discreet. You won't get that. I would recommend hotel number 16, firstly to couples. It's a great place for couples. It's small, it's intimate, it's discreet, it's very stylish. And I'd also recommend it to families, but with grown up children. I literally witnessed as I was leaving, as I was checking out a young boy who couldn't have been more than possibly seven or eight have a full-scale tantrum and I almost felt as if I should volunteer to look after him because he was tired of being holed up in their hotel room watching TV all day long. He wanted to run around, play, have fun, go to the museum, but everything was closed down and people weren't sure what was going on in terms of uh, lockdown. But for somebody who wants somewhere that's home away from home, somewhere that doesn't look or feel like a hotel, the staff are incredibly friendly, they're warm, they're discreet, you see them when you need to see them, somewhere where you can roam around in a very tasteful, well put together place where you don't feel like a number, but it's your home, it's a superb place. On from the library you have, either you go up the stairs to the first floor where my room was, or straight ahead to the Orangery, their in-house restaurant. And then to the right, you have a door leading to the kitchen, which as guests, we didn't have access to. But the Orangery is the piece de resistance for hotel number 16. It's a European brasserie style restaurant. You have a solid selection of salads, sandwiches, burgers, steaks, pasta. You'll find something you like on their menu. 
you come into um, the orangery very similar in terms of decor to, for example, the drawing room in terms of very richly decorated. And um, there was quite a bit of wood in terms of uh, fixtures, your de uh, decorations, statues, um, your oranges, your greens, your whites. I would hazard a guess and say some of the decor in there is from a British designer called Andrew Martin, who's very much into using very bright colors, clashing and mixing different patterns and textures and styles, for example. I definitely think there's some of his pieces in there, but the best bit of the entire hotel is the garden. It is arguably one of the best um, gardens, hotel gardens you'll see in London. You come out and you get to really appreciate it in its full glory in the winter, but it's maintained all year round. But in the in the summer, it takes on a whole life of its own. It's a separate place to the hotel. You could just come there and spend hours just enjoying the tranquility, the beauty, the setup, the service. You come out from morning all the way through to dinner. The tables are always dressed. You have the flowers all around. You have in the middle rectangular fish pond. And then at the end, you have a little nook. I've seen families in there, but I would highly recommend it to couples. I'm sure it gets booked very quickly, but it's very private, it's intimate, it's romantic. It's great for you just to sit in there, people watch, have private conversa conversations, and just enjoy yourself. It's a wonderful little spot. And the, the other thing I really like about the garden is I specifically requested a room overlooking the garden. Firstly, for the views, because the garden looks lovely all year round, but also because London is just totally swarmed with traffic noise. But where the hotel is located, it's away from the main road, the hustle and bustle of Knightsbridge or the tube station, for example, Old Brompton Road. But Sumner Place, you typically only get your residential traffic. And as the, as the evening progresses, you hardly hear anything because residents are at home and traffic literally comes to a halt. But whether your, your room is facing Sumner Place or the garden, you're still going to have your peace and quiet. And then up to the first floor to my room. Room was on the first floor, as I mentioned, overlooking the garden. But you come into the room. It was decorated in white and green very much in keeping with Kit's signature look of always having in her bedrooms the oversized fabric headboard with the with the design detail on top another very well noted british feature is the antique furniture so the side cabinets were antique and then the rest of the room was a mixture of different um, textures um, designs and patterns all within the white and the green um, realm the room was very comfortable in terms of the size. I was on my own and the size was fantastic on my own for two it would have been just as comfortable. And then up a few stairs into the bathroom, the configuration of the bathroom, although it was small, still made it very comfortable and a good size. Selection of Rick Rack products, I requested to change to my favorite gardenia and sandalwood, which they obliged. Um, first thing I do whenever I come into a room is I literally take off my shoes, put on a dressing gown, but I was disappointed to discover there weren't any um, slippers, the fluffy slippers. I don't know if it was an oversight or I specifically had to request them, but I was very comfortable walking around barefoot in my room with the, the robe. Very comfortable room, as I mentioned, for one person. I was in there literally for one and a half days. I didn't move. I was working, I was looking at content, researching content, editing content, and I was very comfortable. I didn't feel boxed in. London has an issue with space. Space comes at a premium and you find rooms typically are very small, but the size was comfortable, was fantastic. I would highly recommend um, hotel number 16 for three reasons. Firstly, the location. Second, the home away from home look and feel of the hotel. It's very much a residential hotel you feel as if you are at home you don't feel as if you're in a hotel you're one of x number of guests the staff are incredibly friendly they are they are there you never feel as if they're on top of you when you need them they're suddenly there the place is very stylishly decorated it's comfortable it's quiet it's discreet it's away from the hustle and bustle it's as if you're staying in a very well put together house and then the orangery, which is absolutely superb. The garden is breathtaking. When it, when it opens up and the flowers are in full bloom in the summer, it is absolutely exquisite. Any other questions 
about hotel number 16 or the area let me know um, as always in the comments down below but do subscribe so you don't miss out on future content i'll be showing you the other staycation in a hotel that's on the opposite end of the spectrum and i wouldn't want you to miss out on that